The Russian invasion of Ukraine began on the 24th of February, 2022. This conflict had roots going all the way back to 2014, and it's got a lot to do with current attitudes toward Russian people and culture. Russian President Vladimir Putin believes in a kind of territorial nationalism. He once said that Ukraine was created by Russia, therefore it should not be an independent state. In his mind, it should be a Russian territory. Therefore, he believes he has the right to incorporate the country into Russia by force if necessary. President Putin and his army's acts of villainy have been well documented. The Russians have used illegal weapons, targeted civilians, and destroyed an immense amount of property with no strategic value. It's unlikely that Putin will ever be held accountable for the destruction and loss of life that he's left behind, all in this fool's quest to restore the glory of the Soviet Empire. Not only that, but it seems like a cosmic injustice that he is also likely one of the world's richest men with an unofficial estimated net worth of around $200 billion. One of his homes is a mansion overlooking the Black Sea worth $1.4 billion alone. It has lavish decor and even an indoor swimming pool. Putin's wealth is staggering and so is his power. He points his finger and an entire country is set on fire. So, should we pray for a man like this? Well, Franklin Graham learned the hard way that the answer to this question is a resounding no. In a tweet from February 2022, he said this, Pray for President Putin today. This may sound like a strange request, but we need to pray that God would work in his heart so that war could be avoided at all costs. May God give wisdom to the leaders involved in these talks and negotiations as well as those advising them. The response was an apoplectic apocalypse. Apart from the predictable tweets about Graham selling his soul to the devil, respondents said the kind of things that would make them finalists for any terrible person of the year award. One woman said that blood would be on his hands, which is kind of strange since Graham asked that people pray for war to be avoided. Other people got political and reprimanded Graham for not praying for President Biden, although you could argue that his statements about the leaders involved would certainly include the U.S. president. Another person missing the point suggested that Graham was secretly supporting Putin. And then there were lots of other people who didn't understand the assignment, who said that it was weird that Graham didn't pray for the Ukrainian people instead. Well, he did pray for war to be avoided, which you would think would benefit the Ukrainian people. So, was Graham in the wrong here? Not at all. We have to understand that as Christians, we live as a people outside of ordinary time and space. One of our peculiarities is doing counterintuitive things. For instance, Jesus said this, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Well, Putin certainly sounds like he fits that description, but then the Apostle Paul says something that complements what Jesus said. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Sounds a lot like what Graham was saying, doesn't it? And remember, the guy in charge when Paul was writing his letter to Timothy was Emperor Nero, one of the most megalomaniacal lunatics ever to rule the Roman Empire. He murdered his own mother and at least one of his wives, and used Christians as human torches to illuminate his gardens at night, which doesn't sound awesome. And yet Paul urges fellow Christians to pray for people like Nero. This is a very different response from one journalist who wrote, If Putin had a heart, he wouldn't have done what he's done. Perhaps we pray that someone puts a bullet through his heart. And that is exactly what Jesus was talking about. You have heard it said, hate your enemy. But notice that Jesus and Paul don't say, pray for evil rulers in the hopes that they get assassinated. Because in the Hebrew Bible, the prophet Jeremiah actually goes one step farther. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. The Babylonians destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They looted and demolished the temple. They butchered the inhabitants of Judah and took many of them into exile. Prophets like Daniel and Ezekiel were taken prisoner and never returned to their homeland, along with untold thousands who almost certainly perished on the journey to Babylon. 
or who died on foreign soil after they got there. And yet God still tells the exiles to pray for the success of the people that carried them off in chains. The Bible asks us to pray for other people. Now, we may not like them. They may be rude. They may be hurtful. They might even be dedicated to our destruction. But the fact is, if they are, they need Jesus. We already have him. Our offer of eternal life is secure thanks to his work on the cross. In Christ, we have the greatest riches this life has to offer. But others don't have Christ, and that means that they are spiritual paupers whose destiny is grim. And that's why we pray for our enemies and for people who persecute us. People like this don't have Christ. And if they don't ever try to find him, they're going to spend an eternity regretting that decision. Now, the world may not understand why we pray for evil people, and that's okay. Many people who claim to be believers may not even understand it, but we understand it. Only those who enjoy a relationship with God really do.